Hello and welcome to this video on kidney anatomy aimed at medical students and all other healthcare professionals. The kidneys can be found bilaterally in the abdominal cavity. They sit in the retroperitoneal space, i.e. they are not within the peritoneum, which is a thin lining that coats most intra-abdominal organs. They can be found at the vertebral level T12 to L3, with the right kidney sitting slightly lower due to the liver. They're around 12 centimetres in length, or around three vertebrae. Each kidney also has an adrenal gland sitting on its superior pole. Let's have a look at the anatomical structure of the kidney's layers. This image is drawn in the coronal plane, as if looking at the body from the feet end. I'll label some bits of anatomy to help you get orientated. There you go. This is a brilliant plane to demonstrate the layers of the kidneys. Also, notice here how the kidney is behind the peritoneum, i.e. its retroperitoneal. The outermost layer of the kidney, though mainly found on the posterior surface of the kidney, is paranephric fat. The next lining is garotis fascia, which is a lining of connective tissue that holds the kidneys in place, as well as holding in the next lining of the kidneys, the perinephric fat. The perinephric fat is thought to have shock absorbing properties for kidney protection. And the inner lining is the renal capsule, a tough fibrous layer. Next, let's look at the anatomy of the renal parenchyma. Parenchyma just means tissue that performs the main function of an organ. In the kidneys, the outer parenchyma is called the cortex, which is adherent to the renal capsule and the more internal parenchyma is the medulla. The parenchyma is organised into multiple renal lobules, which are individual structures made of the outer cortex surrounding a triangular portion of inner medulla, known as a renal pyramid. The cortex projects in between renal pyramids to form columns. The tip of each pyramid is called the papilla, and this is where urine drains out of the parenchyma and into the minor calyces. Multiple minor calyces combine to form a major calyx, which in turn drains into the renal pelvis. Urine is formed in the nephrons of the kidneys. These are microscopic structures that span both the cortex and medulla. Each kidney has around 1 million nephrons, and in 24 hours, all the nephrons in both kidneys will filter 200 litres of blood to remove waste products, maintain acid balance, regulate electrolyte levels, and maintain blood pressure. We won't go into too much depth into nephron function, as this moves into the realms of physiology, but I will give an overview of nephron microanatomy. Blood is filtered in the renal corpuscle, which is made of the glomerulus, which is a tuft of blood vessels, and the Bowman's capsule, which collects the filtrate from the blood. From here, the filtrate travels down the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, and the distal convoluted tubule. Throughout these sections of the nephron, the contents of the filtrate is being altered through reabsorption and secretion of various molecules the kidney is trying to hold onto or remove from the body. Finally, the filtrate reaches the collecting duct before travelling as urine into the renal pelvis. The blood supply to the kidneys comes from the two renal arteries, one supplying each kidney. The renal arteries are direct branches of the abdominal aorta. Since the abdominal aorta lies slightly left of the midline, the left renal artery is shorter than the right, where the right has to cross the inferior vena cava posteriorly. Each renal artery enters the kidney at the renal hilum which is essentially the access point to the kidney at its medial edge. Each artery divides into the anterior branch, which carries 75% of blood from the renal artery, and the posterior branch, which carries 25% of the blood. There is an anatomical plane in the kidney, known as the avascular plane of Brodel, that lies between the anterior and posterior branches of the renal artery. 
It's found slightly posterior to the lateral edge of the kidney and is relatively avascular. This makes it a useful anatomical landmark to aim for in procedures such as nephrostomy insertion. After dividing into the anterior and posterior renal artery, the blood vessels subdivide further into segmental arteries. There are five of these per renal artery, with each supplying a different segment of the kidney. Each segmental artery further divides and gives rise to interlobar arteries, which are situated either side of the renal pyramid. These branch further to form arcuate arteries, then interlobular arteries, followed by afferents and efferent arterioles in the renal corpuscle. These then form peritubular capillaries for excretion and reabsorption of waste and nutrients. From here, blood is drained from the kidney in the respective veins, where the deoxygenated blood eventually reaches the inferior vena cava. It's also important to note that there's considerable anatomical variation between individuals' renal blood supply. For example, some individuals may have multiple renal arteries. Thanks for watching and see you next time.